Why vote debate? That's good from Florence Eshalomi. Let's see another tweet coming up right now. Let's have a look quick. There it is. Why vote? Russell Brand doesn't say don't vote. He says the system is broken. He's right. We'll talk about the system in just a moment. First, I must get an answer to Catherine Geddes' important point. She is homeless. We have a housing crisis equivalent to the end of war. Nobody is saying we're going to have a massive house building thing. John, we, we, we need to build <coughs> half a million houses. And you talk about 200,000. Well, we built 700,000 in the last parliament. We built 700,000 homes in the last parliament. 217,000 of those were affordable homes. We're going to do more of that again. We've introduced policies like help mm. to buy. John. But I want to, while I'm on it, while I'm on it. Hang on, there's a bit of a dispute going on here. Make a point, somebody. What, what is it all about? Yeah. Unaffordable. Everybody to move that to the outskirts of London and you're saying you're building affordable homes. No, you're not. The homes that you're building in London are for foreigners and foreigners are coming in yes. and buying Absolutely. the houses and not living in them. Have, have, have well, you been to number one John, Hyde Park? How many people say, live in that? Are, yeah, sorry. The, those, are, those are not the homes. Are the, the homes that developers are building are not the homes I'm talking about. Yeah. The homes I'm talking about are homes that have been built, for example, through the fact that we've released public land to allow building on Brown Hill. Yes. But Sam, uh, you've but, weak, you have weakened the requirement on developers to provide affordable homes. That's one of the things the coalition, the two of you have done. You've put a better record yeah, no, you, you have. You've, you've, you've completed fewer 13, 13 homes in every year you've been government. in government than the Labour government, the last Labour government, completed that's in 13 not, years. That's not, that's no, that's 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 that is true. Okay, while the politicians pick a you have weakened the requirement for affordable houses. You have. Gemma and Dobson, they, let's hear your point. Gemma Dobson, where are you? Go for it. Um, I'm not a student, I'm a young working woman, and I'm 24 years old and I still live at home. There is no way that I can afford even just to rent privately. What are you going to do to help someone like me? I'm working, I'm, I'm not on benefits. I understand. So what we are going to do, what the Liberal Democrat proposal is, is for the government to give you a loan, up to £1,500 outside London, up to £2,000 uh, inside London. To, to buy a to, home. To, no, to put down as a deposit, uh, to pay for the, for rent. the rent, the rent in advance that you have to pay, plus the deposit you have to pay okay, for the Okay, that's your policy. What about you, Kim? Well, that's all well and good, Brian. Policy. That, that's all well and good, but what we need to remember is we have hundreds of thousands, pe hundreds of, thousands of people coming into this country. Okay? How are you going to house And her? that is increasing like the demand How for housing. Don't blame like that is increasing. Oh, for a listen, we're not, blame, we're not blaming immigrants. <laughs> Okay. And that is increasing the demand for housing. And that is why we've got a housing crisis. The first because because we have an unlimited interested. amount of people coming into this country. Okay. That and this is not these housing don't this want woman. To talk about it. This is not yeah. housing her. You've not given a single policy as yeah. to how she's going to get a house. Well, Answer it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What we want to do. Answer it. I'll tell you. Yeah. I'll tell you what we want to do. John, I'll tell you what we want to do. How are you going to house her? <laughs> John, I'll tell you what we want to do. We want to. Let British nationals have the right to buy in this country. Look, she needs a house. I don't have the money to buy a yeah. house. Yeah. I don't have the money to buy a house. I don't have the money to buy a house. Okay, yeah. I'm going to stop there because there's one big question. Is Westminster fit for purpose? No! no! Do you know that since 1918, when women were emancipated, just 370 women have ever sat in the Commons. A shameful record. Why are there no young people in the Commons? Why is there nobody of 22, 23, 24? Quite How are you going to mend the system? Why doesn't, why doesn't it reflect who we are? I think we've right. got a problem. Well, uh, one thing I would say is the Labour Party has used all women shortlists to significantly increase the number of women MPs. Nearly half the shadow cabinet are now women. We've got a long way to go, John. You're absolutely right. But we need people to participate. We need people to participate in the political process. Because in the end, it's about contribution. How do you see it? You, you sit in the Commons. How do you I, see I, it I, being mended? I sit in the Commons, and even at 30, I mended? think I'm one of the younger ones um, in the Commons. Mm. Um, the Conservative, this is a problem for all political parties. It's not one political party's problem, the even though the Conservatives are the first female Prime Minister of this country. I think we do, the Commons needs to 
represent people more. And the way to do it, one of the ways to do it is for all the political parties to, do, to take a responsibility to make sure that the candidates they are selecting reflect modern Britain. If we give at the, at the end of this parliament, at the end of this election, we will right. have more right. ethnic minority yeah. MPs we, than hold, the hold it up Labour there. Party, I'm gonna, I must give the last. I must women. give the last voice to a student. Thank you. I'd just like to pick up on that and ask what exactly are Westminster doing to make sure that Parliament is representative of the people that it serves? Because, for example, there's hardly any black or minority ethnic people in Parliament. It's full of white, middle-aged middle -aged, um, men, if you ask me. And I feel it's not really representative of Britain. There is a great and provocative question. We'll answer it online. We're going to go online in just a moment and we'll answer that right then. Hilary Benn would like to know how many people here are members of a political party? Quite a lot, because, but then again, uh, you are uh, unrepresented because you're politically motivated. No, true, but the point I was going to make about the selection of right. candidates, the point you made about making Parliament more representative of the society that we are, well, it is parties locally who select the candidates that contest parliamentary elections. If you want to participate in that, one of the ways you can participate is by joining whatever party you want to support and take so, part in the selection of so, those candidates. So that's why okay. we have positive action, a leadership programme hey, to, to bring on <laughs> female candidates and uh, black, black and minority, minority ethnic, ethnic candidates. MPs and that's Democrats why are. even in, in like, seats that we, we, yeah. uh, where we're replacing an Amelia. incumbent MP, we have far more black and minority ethnic candidates and far more women candidates okay. than we had at the last election. Let, let Amelia speak, please. I just please. to say on the best person for the job, because in the European elections, we have had a list in London where we needed 50% um, non-white and 50% not male. And when, the, um, when we first put the nominations out, we didn't actually get that diversity. And so we reopened the nominations and we encourage people to come forward, people who are really good that might not have had the confidence to put themselves forward. And you know what? We had a much bigger a list and when people had the opportunity to vote for all these different candidates our list automatically through that election um, became 50 percent um, non-white and 50 percent not male right. there, there which is means a if there's for... an opportunity for people to the best person for the job might be out there just that they're not putting themselves forward i want to hear from ryan lockwood where are you ryan ryan lockwood there you go I think you can see Hi, um, i'd like to ask Immigration is currently roughly at net 300,000 a year. That's fine if we're building the correct amount of houses, the correct amount of schools, mm -hmm. the correct amount of hospitals, mm -hmm. but why don't we take it in moderation and cut immigration to a sensible level, like you could propose 50,000 skilled workers, and then focus on building the right amount of houses, the right amount of schools, the right amount of hospitals, yep. and catch up and get on the road to, build, to rebuilding broken Britain? Mm -hmm. well, Sam. Well, I mean, you said UKIP uh, proposed a cap of 50,000 uh, people. I don't know what UKIP is proposing on immigration. They talk a lot about immigration. They didn't even mention it on the, in their manifesto. I think I'm the son of second generation immigrants. My parents came here in the 70s. We do recognize that Britain, throughout its history, has benefited from immigration. But I think every country wants to have a sense of controlling its borders, to be able to know how many people are coming in, how many people are leaving. That's the first thing. The second thing is, when you've got a social security system, you want those that are taken out of that system to be people who've contributed to that system. And that is why we're saying that if we get elected, we'll make sure that whether it's housing benefit, whether it's uh, other benefits, people need to live here for a period of a time, so four years, okay. before they get access to them. And I think that is about All fairness. Right. To British people. So Mr. Mr. Blue Shirt. And balance with Mr. With Blue Shirt. Uh, let's be honest, the elephant in the room is the first past the uh, post voting system. Exactly. It essentially means that your vote does not count if your candidate doesn't uh, get elected. Yep. So we've got the technology to change that. We've got the internet. Everybody's vote can be held accountable for what they do. Mm. And the and thing is that the, the existing political, political parties, they have the older generation in their pocket. Sorry, the other way around. They, the older generation have you in the pocket because you know that if you keep house prices high, you have a lack of incentive to change it. And the thing is, if, if the, the um, voting system changed towards a more of a digital form, which the uh, Speaker of the House of Commons has suggested in the next election, then that would be more rep representative because it means 
that pretty much anybody over the, 18, over the age of 18 will easily be able to vote. Okay, okay. I, right. We, we, I mean, tried, Liberal Democrats we, we know tried, the Liberal Democrats are in favour of, of proportional tried representation. Tried to change the voting system. There yes. was a referendum now we are and in, British people voted against it. Brian, now we are in a multi-party condition. Yeah. This is a new line-up. Yeah. We have people here who were not here before. Yeah. And I'm wondering now, Hillary, then, will the Labour Party support wholeheartedly electoral reform? Well, I voted in favour of the alternative vote system in the referendum we had, what, three years ago? Well, he's the one who voted in line with the manifesto. I'm, the rest of the Labour Party no, voted I, against it. Well, I support, because that means that in a constituency, if, if you want to vote for a party first, you can. If that party drops out, then your vote transfers to someone else you want to support. Well, you can and I have a proportional representation for a wholly elected second chamber. AV for the yeah, Commons yeah. and proportional representations for the Lords. And, you know, voting How would is that not, go down with the Conservative Party? Difficult. There, was really a ref, there was a referendum on the alternative Genuinely. vote system which was heavily defeated but under different circumstances. And the, 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 the issue is we have favoured first past the post in this country because it has tended to deliver clear and decisive government. But we have now, those if, days it are fails over. To, yeah. if it fails to, then you're absolutely right. It will come under the spotlight as to whether or not it is the right system to elect representatives of the Commons. Did yes. you know that it's go, the, go we're the only country in Europe? Me thinks the reason why Labour and Conservatives are so keen to keep the system is because it's good for them. Absolutely. They can stay in their constituency. <laughs> the Liberal Democrats at the last election, they had an increase in number of votes, a lot of young voters, and yet the number of seats who went to Liberal Democrat went down. How on earth is that fair? Do you, do you know the last election, Labour got 27% of the vote, Liberal Democrats got 24%, and yet Labour got, I don't know, six, seven times the number of seats? How is that you, right? I'll tell you what's not fair. I'll tell you what's not fair as well. There's a constituency in Wales called Alphon. They've got 38,000 voters. There's another constituency, the Isle of Wight. They've got 110,000 voters. So in Alphon, the, MP, the first candidate there has to work a lot less to become the MP because of the threshold of votes they need to get. We need equal size boundaries as well. What the Liberal Democrats do is they pick the bit of political reform that works for them and they pull the rug from under our feet when we're trying to propose equal size boundaries so we can have fair votes. And if we're going to go down this path, you can't pick and choose which bit you want, you've got to do it all properly but and what, in the right way. What ways. none of you want to do is to reduce the number of MPs. There's far too many. Why but, do we have 650 MPs? We could do with 400 and every MP you ever ask, oh no, I could never manage that number of people. Well, I'm afraid we in the United to, States, in we, virtually every other country, you have a far smaller parliament. Conservatives wanted to reduce the number of MPs to reduce the cost of politics. The Liberal Democrats did not allow that to happen because that would have meant we had to equal boundaries and they didn't agree with it. Mr. Whitechair. Hi, um, just like uh, Ed Miliband in the Russell Brand election, we've forgotten to talk about the deficit. The IFS say that um, uh, the Labour Party spending policies will require uh, 90 billion more uh, borrowing than has been suggested, and yet they plan to spend less on the NHS than the Tories. Exactly. Why is this the case? Henry Ben. Uh, very simply, None of the plans that we've put in our manifesto, for those of you who read it, require any more borrowing. And I would say about the, the Conservatives' pledge on NHS spending, they spent four and three quarter years with the Liberal Democrats saying, you can't make promises to spend money you haven't got. <laughs> and under pressure in the election, suddenly money is no object. It is not credible to do that. The, the issue is, how do you reduce the deficit? We're committed to it. You've got to do it in a fair way. And the thing we don't know is, the, the spending plans of the Conservatives, they, they could affect many people in this room, Henry, but they're not telling us now what it is that they're Henry, going to do. Ed Balls has said, whatever we pl pledge to spend on the NHS, Labour will spend more. That's your position on the NHS. And you are not committed to reducing the deficit. And they're we started this... They're not we, promising we, we, to spend okay. more. We, 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 let's start, bring we in the audience. This, this is an old way. argument that we've heard played out on the yeah. television screens, and it's not really moving votes at all. What about you, Lot? <coughs> what have you got? So I just want to say that um, it's something that three of us are kind of guilty of uh, altogether, is that you, you so bandy so thousands of GPs as sort of a phrase, we, you don't really understand what, where are these guys are coming from, or so, exactly. the, so exactly. the guys in the American exactly. sense you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Where are they going to come exactly. from? Where are you planning on, on getting the people? Very you can put the money forward, but sure. the, the workforce has to be there, so where are you going to get that from? Answers? Well, you have, to, you have to train more GPs. And going back to the earlier... Uh, hang on, but going exactly. back to the earlier question, our National Health Service also depends on doctors and nurses who come from other parts of the world, which is why UKIP's position on immigration ignores the contribution that they make.
to the LGI and Jimmy's here in, in the city of Leeds. And I'd say one other thing about health policy. I find sickening the idea that a party would say to someone, just because they've come from abroad, they're HIV positive, that they should be denied treatment. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Quickly on the point of immigration, um, so you were saying earlier to build more houses we need to cut down immigration, but something we really do need to remember that we don't learn in school is that Britain stole so much from all the countries across the world and that's the only reason we're so great right now. And also, maybe we should be going after those big businesses that avoid tax from our, uh, uh, and don't... Yeah. 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 It, it has to be said that the, the, the places that I've been and, and a number of universities and elsewhere, the anger about the failure to prosecute mm. bankers who have swindled the system. Mm. There is not a single banker in jail at the moment in Britain. Why? But, but you nod you're not your head, but we have no, no solution. When, I, I don't know why we can't prosecute individual bankers, but what we... But what, but what we but, I said I don't understand why. But what we are, what we are doing is we are putting additional levies on the banks to make sure that the banks pay back the money that they owe us. The, the, biggest, bank, the biggest banking bailout in the world happened in the UK, and that was the Royal Bank of Scotland. Right, that, and the chief executive of the Royal Bank of Scotland, Fred Goodwin, managed to walk away under the last government with a gold-plated pension. Now, sort of him, short of him, the truth is, and sometimes it's good, it's very difficult to pinpoint individuals within a bank that were actually responsible for the crisis. But we know there are banks as a whole that did wrong things, so banks that tried to rig the LIBOR markets. And what we've done is we find them, and we've used the money from those fines to pay for the families of soldiers to get homes and also to uh, get other essentials that but, they need. But with respect, the, the Conservatives appointed as a minister somebody who had run a bank which had been money laundering in Mexico and fined nine billion by the American authorities. I, 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 we've got to be, when he was appointed, that information was not in the public domain. If that information had been in the public domain, we would not have appointed him. I'm sure the Labour Party wouldn't have had him as an advisor either. We're but still, the Labour's we, hands are not free on this either. The fact is that there's been, surely, it's right to say, a total license on really misdoings in the city and, and although there are regulatory systems at the end people do things in the city which if they were doing it on benefits they would be prosecuted yeah. and they should John, you're right. Look, the, John, yeah. the, the, the truth is that the regulatory system failed in Britain in France in America. Mm. It was a global crash. That's yeah, but Labour thing. weren't responsible and for what happens in America, and in France well, and in Germany. I know, but the They were responsible for what happened here. I know we were, and it was a failure here, but it was a failure elsewhere. Now, on your point about prosecution, John, the truth is, it is not for politicians to decide who gets prosecuted. We have separation of powers. There are laws about fraud, and if the prosecuting authorities and the police think there is evidence that could lead to a prosecution, it's for the prosecution authorities to do their job. But well, now, look, as we close, let's have some That's final good. points from you. Really Who wants to make some pithy points? Right, yes. So, going back to a, uh, a point you made earlier about current politics being ineffective, mm. I feel as if the certain parties are so concerned with trying to get re-elected that they won't go near mm. some of the more sensitive topics mm. like drug prohibition yeah. that are clearly so ineffective. And we look at other countries like Portugal sure, sure. who have tried things like legalisation and it's proved and statistically shown to be a far more effective policy. Why aren't we looking at things like that? Right to the back, yes. Right to the back. Democrat no, take some more voices from them. People should not be... Uh, uh, given a criminal record for possession of small amounts for personal use. So it is in our manifesto exactly what you are talking about. It, okay. Having a Portuguese type system. To review these policies. It doesn't say that you will specifically do Nick, anything about Nick Clegg has been absolutely clear. He says nobody should be in prison for possession of a small amount of, 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 of any drug for personal use. We okay, the, the woman at the back, let's hear from her. Yeah. Not, Hello, um, the I, on the, back on the point of immigration, my parents are migrant uh, immigrants and they've come to this country, they've worked hard, they've had to deal with exactly. racism, they've had to deal with a lot of struggles and they still continue to stay and want to pay their taxes and pay back to this exactly. country. So I find it disgusting 
And I can't believe that you are pandering, all the parties are pandering to these right-wing um, ideals of, of kind of immigrants being um, sort of a scapegoat for all the problems that are caused by people and bankers, you know, the rich. And, and, and most of um, immigrants are poor and, and you're, you're sort of using them as a scapegoat. I find it disgusting, personally. <laughs> The man in the white tie, at last a tie. Yes, go for it. Just a reflection on the alternative vote, really. If we try to cast our minds back to 1997 and the Scottish uh, devolution, we'll recall that a not insignificant reason for introducing the alternative vote was to prevent the SNP getting a majority. <laughs> and I would just like to ask Hillary how he thought that was going for them. <laughs> well, the answer to your question is the, the people of Scotland will decide, but that's not an argument against having the alternative vote. I think it's a better system than we've got at the moment for electing MPs, which is why I voted in favour of it in the referendum. Did you? Yeah. What point. do you think of it? Do you support the alternative vote? No, I don't support the alternative vote okay. because I think you're moving the democratic deficit somewhere else. You're not. You're, sh you're breaking the constituency link no. with MP, which is very, very. No, because you are. Because you still. You, you still have to increase the size of the constituencies. Yeah. And you think okay. about a constituency where you've got maybe a hundred thousand people as against a constituency where you've got three, four hundred thousand people. You still don't have the same kind of constituency link there as you do at the moment. And I think that is an equally important point as democratic. As okay. Democratic another point here. Yeah. say is the fact that with young people they don't respect politicians they don't aspire to be politicians because they don't trust anything that comes out of their mouth mm -hmm. today we've sat here for nearly an hour debating on issues that affect us that matter to us that concern us but we haven't heard any solutions all we've heard is them bicker amongst oh, each on, other have. Okay. we haven't heard any solutions we want okay. more solutions the last point through. the last point of the evening comes from miss green dress <laughs> There's been a lot of talk this week about freezing uh, income tax from the Conservatives. Yes. And I just wanted to ask what the plan is if we face a fiscal emergency and where the money's going to come from to deal with exactly. that if taxes can't be raised. Exactly. OK, quick pithy answers from the panels and then that's it. We Christine, Christine Lagarde no. from, the, for, from the International Monetary He's Fund He's become a said, Conservative. No, the thing he is, said, he was a policeman, so he knows <laughs> how to get in quick. What, what she said was that the, the reason why the UK economy was booming was because there was a balance between raising taxes and cutting uh, public expenditure. And not only are Labour abandoning that path, but the Tories are abandoning it as well because they're not going to raise any tax, any more tax from anybody. Right, OK. Yes, Amelia? I think I want to touch on what we said about the deficit and debt earlier because there are two ways you can tackle that. You can either make cuts, and we've experienced so many cuts to our public services, they're quite frankly tearing apart our communities and tearing apart what we're proud of in those frontline services. Or you can have a progressive tax that means that people pay a fair share and create a more equal society. I truly believe that we need to have a progressive taxation system to support, especially for our generation, I, I, Nathan, the most vulnerable Nathan, society. Thank thank you. Um, when I'm not working as a, a, a UK representative, I actually work for the long-term unemployed in my constituency of Pontefract and a lot of people in my constituency are um, desperate because of the Tory uh, coalition cuts, uh, the bedroom tax, UKIP would get rid of it and I want to come back to that lady's point at the back, it's not about race, it's about space and we would put British nationals first, that's what it's about. Okay, Look, my, my final okay. point. Your my, final, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, my final point in tax is that the only way in which most of you are going to be able to live the life that you want and pursue your dreams is that you get jobs, earn more, and keep more of what you earn. And that is why we are so focused on making sure that your taxes are cut so that you can live a better life than your parents did. Mm. But, but Sam, look, the, the test of any government is, is it fair? And to, to come exactly. to your point, you introduced the bedroom tax, it affects 1,900 people living in the Leeds Central constituency. It's not a tax. In the, it is a tax. It's not a tax. Because most of them can't move and they don't want to be forced out of their family home. And it's an immoral thing to do. And you did it in the same month that the top rate of income tax was cut. That, now is, we, that is just a... We that will is, that increase the top rate of income tax. That is outrageous. OK, you did. Uh, as, this, we think that those outrageous. The as these feelings of outrage swell tax. around the room, <laughs> I would like to thank Far our up. panel very warmly for coming. They've been great to sort of uh, respond to your total brilliance. But above all, I want to thank you for taking us to the top trend on Twitter. Twitter is trending madly on this debate. Keep debating, keep stirring, keep voting, keep looking for change. Thank you very much indeed. And that's it. Thank you.